they are learners in this unit concept of symbol and use of symbol we will discuss some important points they are symbolic logic and symbol what is symbol the difference between symbol and sign different types of symbols different uses of symbol and after that uh, there will be a summary in this unit uh, concept of symbol and use of symbol now you see their learners first introduction introduction in this unit we shall be dealing with the concept of symbol and some other issues connected with the concept of symbol symbolic logic is a later development of traditional deductive logic symbolic logic involves the use of symbols dear learners the term symbol in logic the term symbol the term symbol in logic is used in a special technical sense symbolic logic which is also known as formal logic is deductive in nature symbolic logic is also known is also known as formal logic is also known as formal logic the use of symbol plays an important role in modern symbolic logic in order to reveal its formal nature modern logic makes use of a special technical language which is completely symbolic in nature dear learners symbolic logic is the result of intensive use of symbols upon traditional deductive logic the exclusive use of deductive method in accordance with mathematical principles signifies the formal nature of symbolic logic the formal nature of symbolic logic demands the use of symbols if we go back to the history of symbolic logic we can find that it is immensely influenced by the development of abstract reasoning that took place in mathematics the triumph of deductive reasoning in mathematics inspired many great thinkers to apply a priori and a deductive thinking in other branches of knowledge also now they are learners many prominent thinkers contributed the field of deductive logic in the latter part of the 98th century and the early part of the 28th century the application of symbols became indispensable in this regard leibniz the forerunner of mathematical logic leibniz again i repeat their learners forerunner of mathematical logic plan to establish a universal scientific language in which scientific concepts could be represented by combination of basic symbols thus it was realized by the thinkers like leibniz and others that logic had a tremendous potential for a scientifically designed universal language which would be mathematical in nature dear learners the attempt to give a mathematical interpretation of logical reasoning gave rise to clear idea of a symbolic logical calculus great logicians like george bull great logicians like george bull 
what he says the great logicians george bull so that algebraic formula could be used to express logical relations with the special symbols called connectives such as conjunction negation disjunctions and conditionals some connectives like conjunction conjunction then disjunction then conjunction disjunction negation then conditionals conditionals german philosopher mathematician and logician frege developed a rich formal language that involves the use of symbols barton russell a british philosopher and mathematician along with a n whitehead wrote an encyclopedic work entitled principia mathematica principia mathematica this is an principia mathematica principia mathematica encyclopedic work principia mathematica which established the point that pure mathematics can be reduced to logic without any residue principia mathematica thus provided strong foundation to symbolic logic the great mathematicians logicians like frege george boole frege george boole russell gave logic a solid formal nature during the 19th century most of the works in logic has focus on the formalization of logical systems formalization of logical systems made it incumbent upon logic to make use of symbols such developments in the part of formal deductive reasoning made it necessary for logic to be thoroughly symbolic in nature hence it came to be realized that symbols and symbolic logic are inseparable it was john van who first used the word symbolic logic to the emerging formal logic in this way symbolic logic and the use of symbols came to be indispensably associated dear learners now after going through this uh, introduction then uh, another concept symbols and the uh, history of uh, symbolic logic you have to know uh, or you have to test yourselves suppose the question fill up the blanks uh, formalization of logical systems made it incumbent upon logic to make use of fill up the blanks the next one symbols and this are inseparable the next one it was this who first used the word symbolic logic to the emerging formal logic dear learners now you see the very important concept in this unit that is symbols in general use symbols in in general use it may generally be stated that symbols are signs or indicators representing some other thing again i repeat dear learners symbols are signs or indicators representing some other things for example national flag of a country is the symbol of that country 
by observing the flag one can say the country which the flag symbolizes the symbol is a sign or indicator indicating something there is a difference between them so you uh, have to know they are learners there is a difference between symbol and sign symbol and sign now you see they are learners for example the existence of smoke indicates the existence of fire but smoke is not the symbol of fire again i repeat they are learners in case of the distinction between symbols and sign you can take a example that example is the existence of smoke indicates the existence of fire but smoke is not the symbol of fire sign you see their learners signs may be natural or artificial smoke is the natural sign of the presence of air so their learners smoke is the natural sign of the presence of fire so uh, smoke is not the symbol of the presence of fire rather you, you can have to say that smoke is the natural sign of the presence of fire again they are learners but red light in a traffic point is an artificial signal to control the traffic it is predecided that running cars have to be stopped on the perception of red light in a traffic point though there is no connection between the two dear learners thoughts operate through the signs or indicators again i repeat dear learners our thoughts operate through the signs or indicators but operations of thought cannot achieve goals merely by depending on the natural signs because the number of natural signs or indicators is very limited as compared to the number of subjects to be expressed moreover since abstract ideas cannot be presented to the senses so the use of indicators which are predecided becomes indispensable thus it can be said that artificial indicators which are predecided may be said to be symbols again i repeat this line dear learners artificial indicators which are predecided may be said to be symbols in general use sign either verbal or written used to refer understand or express something are called symbols again i repeat dear learners in general use sign either verbal or written used to refer understand or express something are called symbols for example we use the sign multiplication chain or we can use that question mark to evaluate answer in such case these signs may be said to be symbols dear learners now another very basic concepts comes in this unit that is symbols in symbolic logic symbolic logic in symbolic logic symbols are used in special sense symbol is a 
non-verbal artificial sign which is pre-decided or consciously designated to represent the or stand for something. Their learners distinguish author of logic L. S. Stabing. L. S. Stabing, what he says, distinguished logician, L. S. Stabing, what he says, he says, or he defines a symbol as a sign consciously designed to stand for something will be called a symbol. From the above descriptions, the features of symbols may be analyzed as follows. So, dear learners, there are some features of symbols. Features of symbols. They are, symbols are consciously used or decided beforehand to stand for or designate something. This feature differentiates symbol from signs. Signs are not always pre-decided. For example, presence of smoke is a sign of the presence of fire. Now, dear learners, you see the smoke is a natural sign, is not an artificial sign. That's why here smoke is not consciously decided beforehand to represent fear. Secondly, symbols are artificial or natural signs are not sufficient to express the subject matter of the operations of thought since their number is very limited. Hence, in logic, artificial symbols are used to stand for abstract ideas or logical principles. These features also differentiate signs from symbols. Dear learners, already I said to you the, that the, uh, multiplication and question mark, these are known as symbols. Dear learners, thirdly, symbols used in logic are non-verbal. Symbols which are used to refer to substance, quality, action, etc are designated as verbal symbols. Again, I repeat their learner this line. Symbols which are used to refer to substance, quality, action, etc. are designated as verbal symbols. On the other hand, alphabets like P, small letters P, Q, R, S, T. P, Q, R, small p, Q, R, S, T. These are known as non-verbal symbols, but signs are not necessarily non-verbal. Signs are not necessarily non-verbal, but symbols used in logic are non-verbal. They are learners. Again, you can taste yourself. Question A. Symbols are thus used beforehand to stand for or designate something. Another one, symbols are thus. And symbol use num number three, symbols used in logic are. These are questions for testing yourself. They are learners. Now another very, very important concept in this unit that is different types of symbols. We know that the extensive use of symbols is a special feature of symbolic logic. Extensive use of symbols is a special feature of symbolic logic. Before introducing different types of special symbols used in different major branches of symbolic logic, Two types of symbols may be roughly be distinguished at the initial stage. These are ideograms or phonograms. 
you see ideograms and phonograms you see in symbolic logic ideograms are used instead of phonograms again i repeat in symbolic logic ideograms are used instead of phonograms ideograms are those symbols which stand directly for concepts again i repeat the learners ideograms are those symbols which are used or which stand directly for concepts for example multiplication chain then question mark then division etc or subtraction you can say are called ideograms on the other hand phonograms are not symbols in the proper sense they are signs which stand directly for sounds as for instance you can say that uh, multiplication chain subtraction question mark these are stand directly for sound for example the written words multiplication chain question mark are phonograms and like the ideograms phonogram represent the spoken english words which correspond to them thus while phonograms refer to the whole uh, phonograms refer to the words in all languages which are written according to some sort of phonetic rules ideograms on the other hand refer to the concept of the idea represented by the words for instance you can see ideograms are that this one then this then this then this these are ideograms but instead instead of it when we use it in our language that multiplication then you can say division then you can say subtraction these are phonograms they are learners you see the difference between now you see ideograms refer to the concepts directly you see these ideograms refer to the concept refer to the concept directly on the other hand phonograms directly refer to the sound and only indirectly to the concept these phonograms directly refer to the sound and indirectly refer to the phonograms you see their learners that uh, again i repeat this one that ideograms refer to the concept directly on the other hand phonograms refer to the sound and only indirectly refer to the concepts thus the representing power of the ideograms is much more than the phonograms secondly ideograms are artificially constructed now you see these ideograms the examples of ideograms that multiplication question mark then division then subtraction are artificially constructed in universal language while phonograms represented the spoken or written words in any languages which are constructed according to some sort of phonetic rules these multiplication division subtraction are used in a kind of language according to some sort of phonetic rules thus ideograms have universal appeal whereas phonograms 
do not have such type of universal appeal as they are confined to specific languages. Thus, the symbols used in symbolic logic are called ideograms in a general sense. There are, however, different types of symbols within the general notion of what are called ideograms. We know that symbolic logic has three important branches. These three important branches uh, are propositional logic, Symbolic logic has three important branches. First one you can say propositional logic. Then you can say predicate logic. Predicate logic and the logic of classes. And the logic of of classes. Different specific symbols are used in different branches of logic. They are learners. Now you see symbols using predicate logic. This is also a very very important concept in this unit. Symbols using predicate logic. In order to perform its specific functions Propositional logic makes use of mainly two types of symbols. Propositional logic uses two types of symbols. First one is propositional variable. Propositional variable. Then logical constants. Then logical constants. So you see two types of symbols are used in propositional logic. First one is propositional variable and second one is logical constants. In a very general sense variables are symbols. Variables are symbols which can be replaced by any one of a definite range. In propositional logic, in propositional logic, the small case letter of the English that P, P, Q, R, S, T, 